Hey guys, I'm Jordan with That Flag Company, and we got something really special for you. Uh, we had this idea, a lot of people told us we were crazy, they told us not to do it, uh, but we see a lot of good that can come from it, so we decided to do it anyway. So what we did is we put together a step-by-step -step, uh, video here for you on making this flag right here. And the reason that we're doing this is we offered this opportunity to a couple of veterans in the past, and it benefited them in a way that they made a few thousand dollars themselves. Uh, that brought a lot of uh, delight to us, so we can, we see the benefit in it. So we went ahead and tackled some of the obstacles that people have, and the reason that people don't get into this due to experience and or the lack of tools. So what we did was we made this exact flag here that you're going to see the steps on how to do after this using nothing but a nail gun and about $100 of material at Lowe's. So with those two things, you can start your own flag company if you so choose to. So, uh, we hope that this video does some good. Uh, we hope that the word gets out to everybody so that they have the opportunity to uh, take advantage of it. And we would love to start seeing a lot of these flags pop up in communities made by their local heroes. And with all that being said, let's get started. Everything we're gonna need to make this flag can be found at Home Depot or Lowe's. We're gonna use Lowe's, so let's run in here and grab everything we need. Top bone wood glue. $2.98. Got Minwax water-based wood stain here. The two colors that they'll mix for you up front is uh, if you're doing traditional, go with scarlet. If you're doing a subdued black and white flag, go with charcoal, $10.77. For a glossy protective coat, we'll use Rust-Oleum, $3.98. All right guys, so for the wood, there's a thousand ways you could skin this cat. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna go with a method that you don't need a saw at your house. However, if you do have a table saw, then you can rip whatever wood to the desired size that you want and that'll work in your benefit. But in this case, we're gonna go easiest route. They have one by twos here at Lowe's. Uh, they sell them in six feet, four, length, four feet, and three feet in uh, length. And the dimensions that you need to know is for the six bottom stripes that we need, those are 36 inches long. For the seven stripes above that that are next to the union, those are gonna be 21 and three quarters inch long. And then for the four braces we're gonna put on the back, those are 18 inches each. So come to the wood section, pull out your calculators, figure out what works best for you, and uh, we're gonna go ask them to cut it for us. Need at least one clamp to pull the flag together whenever we're assembling. Uh, preferred at least two, but I've made it work with one before. But there's some for uh, $13.98. We'll go with those. All right, sanding, uh, not absolutely necessary, but highly recommended. Uh, this will get the job done here. It's an assortment. Uh, hand sander, we'll use this. Has one, two, and three levels. $9.99. Right, we're going to grab a torch. Any basic torch will work. Uh, the more you use one, the more you'll get used to it. But here's one right here. Starter torch comes with the uh, uh, propane and the uh, torch itself. So we'll grab that one. What we're gonna do to start this out is we're going to bust out the torch and uh, we're gonna put a little flavor on the wood and we'll take it from there. All right guys, let's talk burning wood. Burning wood is the number one thing that's gonna set you apart from anybody else. This is where you put your signature on your flag. No matter how many different flags you look at, every single person has a different burn on their flag. Different techniques, different tips. I'm gonna share with you today what I've learned uh, after burning a couple hundred flags myself uh, hopefully it helps you out and uh, so let's go over some key things first of all for those of you who slept through science class that blue cone the tip of it that's the hottest part of the flame so that's where you're gonna get your hottest burn at uh, second thing is it's not how close you get to the wood per se more so it has to do with your speed so what I mean by that is keep the same distance from the wood as you burn it and even if you don't see the grain being pulled out the way that you would like it to be pulled out, keep pushing through all the way to the end and then come back and do it again. Now, if you slow down your burn, you're going to see more grain get pulled through and you're going to see it getting darker. If you speed it up, you're going to see it getting lighter. So whatever you want the effect to be, Base it off of the speed of your flame, not off of the distance. What's important to notice right here is notice how I never stop and hover. Even though I pass through uh, and don't always get the grain pulled out that I want, I never hover over it. I always continue on through the burn, and then I come back and get it on my next pass. This is going to help you get evenly distributed lines. 
Now you'll notice that we burnt the front and back of every single stripe. And the reason we do this is it allows us to go through, look at which burn looks best on each stripe and we'll face that up for every single stripe. And then we'll go through and we will look and figure out which stripes look best and have the best burn on them, pulled out the best grain. And we'll set those to the side and we'll make those our white stripes. The remaining stripes will stain red or black if you're doing subdued. Uh, and the grain will show through the red and we'll show you in a minute uh, how it looks because we're doing red and we are going to go through pick out our best stripes and uh, we're gonna stain them red now you'll notice right here I'm flipping the wood over and I'm actually staining on the inside of the stripe this is because with the wood, with some of it, sometimes it'll push out and you want that red to be showing instead of white bare wood. This is just going to help you be able to uh, make a more quality flag uh, with less noticeable uh, discrepancies on it. The stripes are stained, so we went ahead and laid them out to give us a quick preview of what the flag is going to look like once it's assembled. Make sure everything kind of matches upright for this one. So that's going to bring us to the union. Now the union on this 36 inch one needs to measure 10 and a half inches by 14 and a quarter inches. Uh, you can use a Dremel to do your own stars. You can use a hammer and chisel. Uh, what we do is on our website, uh, if you'd like us to make and send you the union or unions, uh, you can go onto our website, thatflagcompany.com, T-H-A-T and the whole word company is spelled out. Go onto thatflagcompany.com uh, we offer the unions for these 36 inch builds. We also offer unions for 48 inch flag builds. Uh, if you'd like to go that route, we do traditional uh, and subdued or blue like this one is here. Uh, we got our armored insignia uh, here. We can also do infantry, engineer, uh, transportation, uh, you name it, it's on there. Uh, here we got the Marine Corps, um, EGA, very popular. Uh, you can do it blue or also subdued black. And then uh, down here, Fire and Rescue, this one's traditional blue. That one looks really good, subdued, uh, with a thin red line below it. Um, we offer that one as well, as well as a dozen other ones. But uh, another option that we offer is if you have a design that you would like for us to make for you, uh, you, you submit it with the image. We'll do it up for you. Uh, One-time fee for setting it up. Uh, we'll get it right. And then you can continue to order that union for the same price that these are uh, afterwards. Uh, without any additional fees. So if that's something you're interested in, we also offer that. Uh, this flag right here that we're working on, this 36 inch, this one, since we're uh, doing it a little bit differently, it's gonna stay in our house. So I let my wife choose. And so she chose the Betsy Ross 1776 version for this flag. And uh, now let's move on to assembly. Okay, so we flipped the flag over. Uh, so that we can begin assembling it. It's going to be face down. Uh, I have made the mistake before of not double checking my stripes. So after I flip it over, uh, I do always double check. Your top one should be either red or black, depending on whether you're doing traditional or subdued. And your bottom one should also be. So recommend doing that. What we're going to do now is we're going to put a, a thin bead of glue on every single stripe and then push it all straight together before we begin uh, putting on the clamp. So let's apply some glue. What's key here is you don't need a lot of glue. If you put a lot of glue, whenever you compress the flag, it's going to squirt out to the top and you're going to have a lot of dry glue on the top of your flag or the back of your flag. So in this case, a little bit will go a long ways. All right, now that the glue is on, we lined everything up based off of the union itself. So we made sure all the short stripes were pushed towards the union and flush here, and then all of these longer stripes were pushed towards the union here and lined up on this side with the union. Uh, so we use this as our focus. We're gonna grab our clamps now, and uh, our first brace is gonna merge the uh, union with these stripes here. All right, we so got the clamps push. on, pulled together. We're ready for our first brace here. We're just gonna make the difference right here between the union and the stripes and put the brace right there. This is roughly 14 and a half inches in. Our next stripe is gonna be roughly an inch from the edge. 
and then on the opposite side it'll be an inch from the edge and then our fourth strap that's the same as this one on the side it'll be the opposite it'll be 14 and a half inches from that far end to balance it out and make it even uh, for our nail gun we use 18 gauge one and a quarter inch uh, nails and we are going to do this in uh, fast motion just so we don't bore you to death now I started with the brace that joins the union with the stripes. You don't necessarily need to start right there. You can start on the far edge and work your way in if you'd like. Um, if you can afford more clamps, you can clamp the whole flag together at one time. Uh, and that also works very well. I just started with that brace just to ensure that my stripes to the side of my union matched up really well. All right, now that we got our braces on, Flip it over, see how it looks. Looks like a flag, so we're doing good. It's all in the right order, the colors are. So what we're gonna do now for the next step is all of these edges, um, we're just gonna do a little refining here. If you notice all these ed edges here are a little wompy looking on each side here. So we're gonna grab our sander, uh, that we bought at Lowe's. We're going to go with the number one uh, coarse removal, the tougher one, and we're going to sand these off to get them straight and a little bit on the edges too. And uh, then we're going to come in behind it with a blowtorch and we're going to torch the side to make it blend in with the rest of the flag. Um, another thing is, if you have any issues such as your union doesn't match up with your stripes, they're too big, too small, sticking out, you got a stripe that's sticking out, and you don't want to buy any power tools, you can buy one of these uh, pocket planers. Uh, this one's made by Stanley. Looks like a cheese grater, but for wood. And uh, you can take it in and shave off the wood uh, in bigger chunks to make it more even. Our straps are pretty even as they are, so I think we'll get away with just using this uh, this sander, hand sander, and uh, let's get to it. All right, now that we got the uh, edges done up, looks a whole lot better. As you can see, the sides are better. This brings an all around better appearance to the flag overall. Uh, what, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take it outside, we're gonna wipe it off, and then we're gonna spray this coat of uh, crystal clear enamel by Rust-Oleum. Uh, the important thing about this is uh, you need it to be UV protectant for anybody that wants to display them or hang them outside. Uh, we use this as a base coat. We also put spar urethane on ours for an even uh, thicker, glossier coat, uh, but it's not necessary. You'll see whenever we spray with this, that uh, this comes out really nice and uh, makes your flag look really pretty. After just one coat of the crystal clear enamel, here's our final product. Uh, whether you're looking to start your own business venture, or if you're just looking to make a one-of-a-kind flag for your house or for your family, friends, loved ones, we hope that this uh, how-to video has been very helpful and uh, able to assist you in some way, uh, please uh, go and visit our website, thatflagcompany.com, see if we can help you out any further. And uh, if you have any questions, don't hesitate, shoot us an email, thatflagcompany at gmail.com. And uh, we wish you the best of luck. Thanks.